$5 a month for 12 months. First at four, a trip to the ER for Kelly Stafford as she recovers from brain surgery. The quarterback's wife sharing her story step by step. Also, it looks like the road to the White House runs through Michigan in 2020. How Vice President Mike Pence is already reaching out to local voters. Paula? A change in the strategy to fight opioid addictions by going after Big Pharma in a big way. We're going through the lawsuit. Hi, Ben. Paula, it was literally freezing this morning, but we have bounced back very nicely. Thank you. We'll see if we can keep this streak going. Your forecast live from Ann Arbor right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali. Vice President Mike Pence wrapping up a whirlwind visit to Metro Detroit. This is video from the arrival of Air Force Two you're looking at. It's at City Airport. It was there this morning. He's here raising money for President Trump's reelection and reaching out to voters on issues important to Michigan voters. Let's bring in Devin Skillian, who's been following the vice president's visit today. Devin? Sandra, the vice president hasn't been to Michigan since before the midterm elections, and back then he was here with a warning for undecided Michigan voters, urging them to support support the GOP for the sake of the job market. Well, this afternoon, less about polling and more about policy, specifically the USMCA or the United States Mexico Canada Agreement, the deal, the latest attempt to replace NAFTA, a policy that President Trump was often very vocal against. In a speech at the Ford Rouge Complex in Dearborn, the vice president encouraged Michiganders to urge their congressional representatives to pass the new agreement. So we got to get it done. We've got to get it done, and it's really why I'm here to ask for your help. But the clock is ticking. It's time. And we need Congress to act, to approve the USMCA, and to approve the USMCA this year. But Motor City and the great state of Michigan need to be heard. Now, of course, President Trump carried Michigan in 2016 by a very narrow margin, terribly important to his election victory. So we expect his campaign to make Michigan a priority again. And we have already seen, of course, the Democratic hopefuls coming to our state. So, Sandra, going to be a very busy year and a half, including the Democratic debate coming up here this summer. More on the vice president's visit coming up at 5 o'clock. Yeah, busy almost seems like an understatement, doesn't it? All right. Thank you, Devin. Breaking news now, a sex assault investigation underway at Pontiac High School. Here's what we know so far. This is what we've been able to confirm. Police say a female student told school officials he a female student told school officials that she was assaulted this morning by a male student. A review of the security camera video shows that two students were in the B wing of the school as she described, but the lockers there blocked the view of what happened. The suspect has been interviewed. He is now in custody pending criminal charges. We know a robocall is going out to parents to let them know about the allegation. Sean Lay is in Pontiac. He's gathering more information. He's working on a live update and he will have reaction coming up tonight at 5. Kelly Stafford continues to share her recovery from brain surgery with new posts on Instagram, including a slight setback as well. The wife of Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford says she was trying to taper off steroids, hoping to deal with the pain on her own. But she writes in part, and this is a quote, I was so wrong. The pain got so far ahead of me. I ended up in the ER very early this morning, back on steroids and pain medication. Stafford will be at the hospital overnight, but hopes to be home tomorrow. Detroit's police chief releasing information from an audit of the city's sixth precinct. The investigation was sparked by a racially insensitive Snapchat video that got national attention back in February. Today, Chief James Craig says the problem is bigger than the two officers who posted the video. He says of the four command officers at the precinct, three exhibited behaviors found to be inappropriate or they failed to address others inappropriate actions. One command officers retired, one was demoted and one is undergoing mandatory sensitivity training. The chief says this kind of behavior is just unacceptable. And with one of the command officers, he showed bias when confronted with a racially insensitive statement that he should have immediately addressed. This is a police department that continues to strive to excellence and management level in action and addressing critical workplace issues will not be tolerated. The two officers responsible for the offensive video, they have been fired. Activists are now calling for the audit to expand throughout the department.
Ford is making some big steps toward the clean energy auto market with a massive investment announcement today. The automaker has poured $500 million into electric vehicle startup Rivian with a goal to co-develop the next generation of battery electric vehicles. Right now, no timeline has been given for when Ford hopes to release a finished product. The investment still needs to be approved by regulators. The battle against the opioid epidemic is taking center stage across the country today. Right here at home, local cities are taking legal action. And at the same time, the president, President Trump, is attending a drug crisis summit in Atlanta to talk about the crisis. It's all part of a full court press to crack down on a system some say has made it way too easy for people to get addicted. Paula Tutman is live in Sterling Heights at this hour, and the new legal battles kicked off today. Paula? Yeah, it sure does. In this 150-page civil lawsuit, there are assertions that Big Pharma falsified data, knowing how addictive it was, that it should have only been used for palliative, end-of-life comfort care, but instead was pushed out to physicians as pain management, creating this national scourge. He says he just liked the high, and it led into a life of crime and shame. Doctors shopping for prescription painkillers. 17, 18 years old is when I started recreationally taking um, Vicodins and Norcos. And then by 19, I was introduced to Oxycontin. Uh, it was when Oxycontin, you could uh, crush it and sniff it. And then when they got too expensive, turning to heroin. Yeah, I went to treatment five different times. David Clayton's path to redemption started by dying twice in two days and being brought back by Narcan and fast-acting emergency first responders. So many years of, of incarcerations, treatment centers, uh, homelessness. Today, the ultimate revenge, recovering, working for the nonprofit Families Against Narcotics, and standing at the front line of a major lawsuit and strategy shift to get legal drugs off the streets. The suit is mammoth. The city of Sterling Heights working with nearby Macomb County municipalities, essentially suiting up with armor and legal swords to cut off the proverbial head of the dragon. 39 pharmaceutical companies and alleged pain clinic bad actors named the charge pushing opioids into the community. Uh, Oxycontin, MS Cotton, Dilaudid, Hazingla. I mean, these, these drugs have a very limited place in the, in the medical community. They should not be prescribed for a sprained ankle. They should not be prescribed for a sore back. These are the type of drugs that you take once and you can start having addictive qualities too. Named in the suit, Big Pharma, companies with household names like Johnson & Johnson, all the way to local pain clinics at the top of the defendant list. The Pain Center USA in Warren, their phones already disconnected. The number you dialed has been changed, disconnected, or is no longer in service. Just hours after the suit was filed in the 16th Circuit Court. They, they misled, they funded studies, they advertised in journals so that negative aspects regarding opioids wouldn't be made available to the public, to the physicians that were prescribing it. This just a day after Larry Dowd, a pharmaceutical bigwig and former CEO of Rochester Drug Cooperative, is cuffed and hauled into court like a drug kingpin. Attorneys say they are starting at the top to change the bad practices with pharmaceutical companies. And in the future, we'll look for physicians, dentists, and others who act like drug pushers instead of physicians. And these attorneys also say that physicians are already on notice. This puts them more on notice. No dollar amount actually mentioned in this lawsuit, but consider this, that supposedly the statistics say it's something like 32,000 or 38,000, I think it is, just to navigate a drug overdose case from first responders all the way through the judicial system. These attorneys are gonna go through records for police departments as well as first responders, curate those numbers, and also get that money back in the millions. All right, Paula, thank you so much. Ben Bailey is taking the first forecast on the road. He is talking to viewers about being ready for severe weather when it strikes. Ben, where are you? We are out in Ann Arbor, Sander, with the Meyer on Ann Arbor Saline Road. I know there's multiple ones out here, so I'll tell you the right one. It's our first severe weather radio day of the season, and we'll be talking more about that uh, throughout the shows here this evening. But the weather, nice now. Not so much this morning when we woke up. Just about everybody started out in the 30s. Some lows were down to as low as 32, including right here in Ann Arbor. And the view from just down the street at the big house uh, showing temperatures are in the 60s across the area. So even with some of the cloud cover, 
Uh, we bounced back fairly nicely. Officially right now 59, so we've come down just a little bit with some of that additional cloud cover. The winds are calm. That's a huge difference from what we saw yesterday. Rain not far around the corner, and unfortunately the weekend does look like it's getting colder, and we'll talk about all that coming up in just a few minutes. Of course, you've seen these guys before. These are the uh, weather radios from our partners at Midland. And uh, we are out here offering these for the uh, first time this season. Of course, it's the first of three events that we'll be doing. Uh, and I know a lot of folks out here in the West Zone have waited for us to come out here. So we'd love to see you stop by and see us here. Again, we're at the Meyer on Ann Arbor Saline Road. And uh, we'll be here uh, throughout the evening. More on your forecast, of course, more on our weather radio day in just a few minutes. Sandra? We'll see in a little bit. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead, unwanted lewd photos. It is a pitfall of modern online dating. Now one app is taking some new steps to try to help women protect themselves. We'll talk about that a bit later on. Also ahead, there's a new way to protect your deliveries from porch pirates. But up first, this woman is suing United Airlines. It's in a case involving racial slurs, how it made her feel, and why she says she's very thankful for other passengers. That story coming up right after the break. 7800. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Community members in Rockwood come to this park to honor their loved ones with memorial trees and plaques. This tree means everything. But police say someone damaged a few of the plaques. We'll tell you how the community is reacting. If it was a movie, it'd be called Three Billboards Outside Madison Heights. They're up to try and save the life of this guy, Boomer, who's been here a year. United Airlines facing a lawsuit now from a woman who says a desk agent used, used a racial slur during a confrontation. The actress says she was talking to a United agent in Houston about being reimbursed. She claims the agent told her to stop looking at her with that, quote, monkey face and called her a, quote, shining monkey. Hughes says other passengers stood up for her and she says that helped her during a very vulnerable moment. I mean, she made me powerless. She stripped me of all my power in that moment. It was nothing I could have said as a black woman, as a woman of color. United tells our sister station KPRC it's removed that agent from her duties and they are now seeking termination following her union contract. Also, United sent a statement out that reads in part, and this is a quote, this incident is deeply offensive and does not reflect the fundamental values of our company and our 90,000 employees. Take a look at what heavy rains have left behind. This is near Dallas, Texas. Storms there dumped several inches of rain on the area, leading to a really, really bad situation and lots of flooding. Luckily, no injuries have been reported, but look inside this parking garage. This is at the Dallas Love Field Airport. Several feet of water swamped dozens of cars there, many now ruined. Well, just imagine flying home and finding your car there in that garage, almost completely underwater. Well, we are enjoying lots of sunshine here at home, but we all need to be ready, of course, when severe weather strikes. And that's why our Ben Bailey is live in Ann Arbor today for a special event. Hey, Ben. Yes, Sandra, and the good news is, is we've got some time because we don't see anything in the uh, forecast here for the next seven days that has us worried as far as storms go. Uh, the temperature is not going in the right direction once we get past the next 24 or 48 hours, but we'll get there eventually. Numbers outside look pretty good compared to where we started out this morning. A uh, lot of 60s out there still, even though we were a little bit warmer earlier, uh, 60 degrees there from Lapeer right down through Ann Arbor where we're at. And then on the east side, we're looking at some cooler temperatures in the mid to upper 50s. But the winds are a lot lighter today than what we were looking at yesterday. Here's your satellite image. And yes, there are some clouds. These are all bubbling up from a low that's down to the south. And eventually, we will get showers off of that low. It looked like we were going to get sandwiched between those two systems tomorrow and make it through with uh, sunshine all day. But uh, things have changed just a little bit. You can see some of those clouds obviously streaming in tonight and they'll thicken up as we get towards morning. Should get out the door with dry conditions and then later on Thursday, we'll see those showers start to develop late morning, early afternoon, and then they become a little bit more numerous as we head towards the second half of Thursday and going into uh, Thursday night, Friday morning. So a few showers around, nothing that's gonna be a complete washout, but do expect to see some raindrops as we finish out the work week. Low temperatures tonight, not nearly as chilly as what we woke up to this morning. Gonna be a lot of 40s as we start tomorrow morning, calm conditions. And then as we get during the day, yes, we are expecting the rain, but it's going to be pretty widely scattered throughout the day. So a lot more dry spots than wet. 
High temperatures still managing to hit 65 in the afternoon despite the clouds and showers around. And then here comes the weekend and every day we look at this forecast, those numbers Saturday and Sunday just keep getting a little bit lower. 56 on the high side Saturday, 54 on Sunday. And then we start recovering as we head into next week. But as promised, no severe weather in that forecast. It eventually will be here. If you've lived here long enough, you know it's not going to be too far around the corner. We're out here at Meyer for our first severe weather alert radio day, and I'm here with Rich Pullman from the National Weather Service. And Rich, this is not the newest technology on the block, but it is solid. Yeah, and the key is that it's going to alert you and make it a sound that's loud enough to wake you up. So if that tornado warning is issued by the Weather Service at 3 a.m., I mean, I have the TV on. The sirens aren't designed to be worn or be heard inside a building, and your cell phone may be downstairs charging. So the weather radio with 90 decibels worth of sound is going to wake you up, so you can get your family to safety. I can tell you. I mean, just trying to go to work and find your cell phone is one thing. Yeah. I can imagine if there's a severe weather situation, but it's always good, even if you get alerts in a separate technology, it's always good to have a backup. Yeah, yeah, we always require our storm ready communities to get at least four ways to receive the weather service warning because you want that backup confirmation and also to make sure that all the systems are working and so that you can be alerted and get to your place of safety quickly. All right, Rich, thank you very much. It is a bulletproof backup and you can get it here for a discounted price. We're at the Meyer and on Ann Arbor Saline Road. Come see us. Sandra, back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Ben. Still ahead, giving women more control over unsolicited mood photos. Plus, why you won't have to go to the theater to see Oscar caliber movies. But first, if you're uncomfortable letting delivery people into your home when you're not there, maybe this new option is for you. It's all coming up in Trending Stories, coming up next. Um. In today's trending stories, Amazon offering another option to prevent porch pirates from stealing your deliveries. Prime members can now have boxes delivered inside their garage. Just like the Amazon and home delivery, you'll need to give the company access. Customers will receive alerts when the garage door opens and closes. And right now, the new program is available in 50 different cities. In fact, we've posted a link on the Help Me Hank page so you can figure out if you're eligible for garage delivery. You can find it at clickondetroit.com. You may have heard about this. The dating app Bumble focuses on making women comfortable with online dating. Well, now it's cracking down even more on lewd pictures. Starting in June, it will use artificial intelligence to flag any sort of lewd photos. You can choose to view the image, block it, or report it to Bumble. The app already has other safeguards in place, but is looking for an extra layer of protection. Right now, the company is also pushing for a law in Texas to make sharing of non-consensual lewd images a misdemeanor offense. Netflix almost won an Oscar for Best Picture this year for the movie Roma. Some powerful folks in Hollywood, like Steven Spielberg, wanted to change the rules so streaming movies would not be eligible. But today, in fact, the Academy says the rules will not change. A feature-length film only has to play for one week in a Los Angeles County theater to qualify for the Oscars. So that means streaming services won't have to release movies across the country to get Oscar gold, and we can all watch Oscar-caliber movies right in our own homes. Well, you may have heard about this as well, created lots of buzz today. He did it. Jeopardy! James, also now the Million Dollar Man. 34-year-old James Holzhauer has been on a red-hot winning streak on the classic classic game show. He's won 14 games in a row. He's grabbed more than a million dollars, now setting the record for how quickly anyone has reached that mark. You may remember Ken Jennings won 2.5 million, but that was over 74 wins. You can catch James Jennings record. He's back in action tonight at 730 right here on Local 4. Still ahead, could this be a Jeopardy question? What famous artist died almost 500 years ago? And how do you pay tribute to one of the greats? We're going to show you coming up next. The last head of the state health department was charged with involuntary manslaughter, and that is just one of the issues facing the new director. We talk about measles every day. I get a report every day, often more than once a day, about the latest numbers and the latest on what we're seeing. Tonight at 5, I'm sitting down with the new man in charge of Michigan's health to talk measles, Flint, and the biggest concern that he has about the health of our state moving forward. 
Finally today, first at four from one artist to another, we're going to show you a huge tribute to the one and only Leonardo da Vinci. Take a look at this video from Italy. A land artist plowed through an open field to create a portrait of da Vinci. The 500th anniversary of the artist's death is coming up on May 2nd. I'm hoping, there we go, here we go. This piece measures 10 square miles, and you can see it here. The local artist had to mark the anniversary just a little bit early because the field will be cultivated for crops in just a couple of days. Thank you so much for joining us today. First at four, we're back in a half hour with Local 4 News at five, but stick around. Inside Edition is coming up next.